journey to you all. I hope and pray that you're continuing safe and well. As always, I'm most especially grateful to Guy for enabling us to come together in this way once again, and to Chloe for sharing the beauty of her soul. I've sent an invitation, hopefully, to many of you to join me on Zoom at 10.30 a.m. for a quick get together and a chance simply to say hello to each other. Do come if you can, even if you can only stay for a few minutes. No agenda, just a chance to say hello to each other. Today is the third Sunday in Lent and our thoughts are beginning to turn to the joy of the Easter season. But rather like the battle with COVID-19, there is still work to be done before we can truly begin to celebrate. Today's psalm reminds us that part of that work is that we should re-examine ourselves and our lives in the light of God's word. That's the challenge of our psalm this morning and Brian will read it for us as we begin our worship. Thank you, Brian. Psalm 19, verses 7 to the end. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Brian. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. So let us, in the quietness of our own hearts this morning, come before the Lord, who is full of compassion, and let us acknowledge our sins to him, in penitence and in faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, and in what we have left undone, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and we have marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and we repent of all our sins. For the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. We hear God's promise of forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. 
pardon and deliver us from all our sin. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The lovely collect for the third Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lenten Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made. And you forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Ghost be honour and glory, now and for ever. Amen. Now I'm looking forward very much to hearing what Claudia has to say about spring cleaning. I think it's way past time that I did some myself. But before Claudia speaks to us, Cordelia and Adriana will bring us our gospel reading and after Claudia's talk, Lydia and Tabitha will lead us in our prayer. A very big thank you to you all. Thank you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Hello, everyone. I'm just feeling a little bit tired this morning because I've had such a very busy week. But I'm so pleased with everything I've achieved. Let me tell you why. This week, the wonderful month of March started. I love March because I always think it marks the start of spring. The weather is often beginning to get a little bit better and the evenings are beginning to get a bit lighter. We are starting to see a few spring flowers in our garden and some of our trees are beginning to spring open. It's such a lovely time of the year and it always invigorates me and that's why I'm feeling just a little bit tired. I've been spring cleaning. I've cleaned out cupboards, waxed the furniture, cleaned the windows and I've even sorted through all my books and paperwork. I've done a pretty good job at clearing, tidying and cleaning. And although I'm a little bit tired, I'm feeling really good, almost refreshed. Jesus did some clearing up in today's gospel reading. 
he went to the temple in Jerusalem one day and found all sorts of things going on in there that shouldn't be. God wanted the temple to be filled with prayer so that people could go to it and feel close to him there. Now the temple at Jerusalem was a very special place, but when Jesus arrived, he found it filled with people bustling about, buying and selling things. Money was clattering and there were lots of animals making all sorts of noises. It looked more like a marketplace than a temple. And Jesus couldn't believe his eyes and he didn't like what he saw. He knew that this was the last thing that the temple was meant to be like and it made him a bit cross. So he drove all the animals outside and turned the tables over. And he cleared everything out that was keeping the people from being able to pay attention to God. You could say that Jesus himself did some spring cleaning. Sometimes our lives can get busy and noisy with distractions, just like the temple was before Jesus cleared everything out. And when that happens, we have a harder time paying attention to God. But today's story reminds us that when we invite Jesus into our lives, then Jesus can help us get our lives cleared up, just like he cleared up the temple. This week is the third Sunday in the season of Lent. And the word Lent is shortened from an old English word called Lenkton, which means spring season. So there's no better time for us to look inside ourselves and see if we need to do any spring cleaning. Is there anything in us that needs to be changed? Or do we need to clear some space in our busy lives to pay more attention to God? They're good questions. They're big, difficult questions that I've talked about before. So let's now pray to our Father God for his help for us to spring clean our lives during this period of Lent. And this morning, Tabitha and Lydia will read our prayer. Father God, during this season of Lent, when we think about spring cleaning, we ask your help to spring clean our lives. Our lives are filled with lots of thoughts, words and activities. Please show us which of them are good and which of them are not, so that we can pay better attention to you. Amen. Thank you to you all. And thank you especially to Lydia and Tabitha and to mum and dad, Rachel and Mike. As Claudia has just said, Jesus did some clearing up in today's gospel reading. Claudia likened it to spring cleaning and I'm full of admiration that Claudia has already tackled her spring cleaning. Spring cleaning by definition takes place close to the beginning of a new year in order to make ready for the coming year. So it makes sense that John should place Jesus cleansing of the temple in Jerusalem right at the outset of Jesus' ministry, a preparation for the challenges which lay ahead. But only John does this. The other gospel writers place the cleansing of the temple after Jesus had ridden triumphantly into Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday, hailed by thronging crowds. Maybe this event happened twice. Or maybe John wanted to place it here to raise the curtain on what the Lord Jesus Christ had come to do. Jesus' ministry heralded abundant blessing. The lavish outpouring of wine at the wedding in Cana of Galilee had already borne witness to that. But Jesus' coming also heralded God's judgment upon those who refuse to receive him. And that judgment began with the house of God. The Gospels record many confrontations between Jesus and the religious people of his day. So John sets the stage right at the very beginning with Jesus' attack on the practices in the temple, which makes such a mockery 
of their worship. How dare you, Jesus said, turn my father's house into a market. But John also uses this event to underline the identity of Jesus right from the very beginning. He has already declared Jesus to be the living word of God. He has recorded John the Baptism, Baptist description of Jesus. Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. He has included Andrew's testimony to Simon. We have found the Messiah. Now, he introduces Jesus' claim about himself from his own lips. If Jesus calls the temple, my father's house, then surely he is claiming to be the son of God. In remembering later the words of King David, zeal for your house shall consume me, the disciples recognised that at this point Jesus is certainly claiming royal descent through the very lineage from which God's promised Messiah was to come. No wonder the Jews are rattled and no wonder they ask Jesus to prove his authority to make these claims. There is a very great irony in Jesus' reply to them. Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. The siege of Jerusalem by the Romans and the destruction of the temple were not far off. Unwelcome and unforeseen, but nearer in time than the 46 years it had taken to build the temple. But, wrote John, the temple of which Jesus was speaking was his body. John was clearly writing with hindsight and he was making it very clear that the suffering, the death and the resurrection of Jesus were implicit in his ministry from the very, very beginning. The Jews understood their magnificent temple to be the very place where God had chosen to dwell. And that's what makes their desecration of the temple's courts so infinitely shocking. But Jesus spoke of the temple of his body, implying that it was within him that God had chosen to dwell just as John has already told us in that great prologue to his gospel. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The religious people of the day would, do, would treat the living temple of God with no greater respect than they were presently treating the temple of stone. So where does God make his dwelling today? That's been one of the big questions for the Church of God raised by the pandemic. In closing so many of our beautiful buildings, are we denying people access to the very presence of God himself? The Apostle Paul was not referring to a building when he reminded us that the church is the body of Christ. Instead, it is the whole people of God who embody what Paul described as the fullness of God in the world. God in Christ chose to dwell among his people. We are the embodiment of Jesus in the world. Where we are, there the Lord Jesus should be able to reveal himself. It is an awesome thought. It would not be surprising then that God might decide to spring clean his church, 
perhaps he's already using the pandemic to expose some of the wrongs among his own people. And maybe when we come together again, we shall realise that there are changes which need to be made in the way that we work, witness and worship together. But Paul also emphasised our responsibility as individual Christians. To the believers in Corinth, he wrote, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who is in you. Even more awesome, God in the person of his Holy Spirit has chosen to make his dwelling within the life of every Christian. Through each one of us, God chooses to make himself known. Someone once said, you or I may be the only picture of the Lord Jesus Christ that another human being ever sees. So the cleansing and the cleaning and the clearing need to begin in my heart and life. And that's a part of the message that Lent has for all of us. We who have received God's abundant blessing through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, must also, through him, allow our behaviours to be challenged and our inner lives sanctified so that we might serve him better. As Claudia put it so vividly, and I'm going to finish with her words, there's no better time for us to look inside ourselves and see if we need to do any spring cleaning. Is there anything in us that needs to be changed? Or do we need to clear some more space in our busy lives and pay more attention to our Father God? Amen. So let's reflect on that thought as Chloe leads us in this beautiful hymn of prayer. And then Roy will lead us in our intercessions. Thank you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your
Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, creator of all things, we give you thanks for the resources of our world, for the wonders and mysteries of the universe. Lord, help us to use wisely all you have given to us for the benefit of others, for the well-being of the earth, and to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church that it may be faithful in proclaiming the good news of the gospel. We, for we have read that the message of the cross to those who are being saved is the power of God. May we share that message in our day-to-day -day lives, both in our words and the way we live. Not being able to meet in fellowship in church is hard for all of us. However, it gives us a better understanding of the lives of our brothers and sisters in the persecuted church, who have to worship in secret, often alone or in small numbers. Father, Surround them with your love and protection and strengthen their faith and trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we pray for our government as they seek to rebuild our economy. We pray for those who are on furlough and those who have lost their income. We ask that soon there will be an opportunity to work again as the economy expands. We pray for all young people seeking to begin their careers, that they may be given hope for a better future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the numbers that have received the COVID-19 vaccination and pray that this will reduce the numbers who will need to be admitted to hospital. We thank you for the dedication of all those who work in the health service and ask that you will continue to help and support them in these difficult times. Bless the fearful, the lonely and those forced to stay indoors. May they soon be able to meet with loved ones and friends again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are ill and those parted from their loved ones due to sickness, especially those known to us. We pray for your healing hand upon them, that they will be restored to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have lost loved ones and friends to COVID, for all who are mourning and are sad and lonely. We pray that your love and comfort will support them at this time. And we give thanks for the memories of loved ones and friends that are now with you. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Roy. And thank you to all who have shared in our service this morning. Please remember that if you'd like to join me in a Zoom, I shall be setting one up at 10.30 a.m., this morning, just after this service. Hopefully you do have an invitation. Our service next Sunday, the 14th of March, which is of course Mothering Sunday, will go out on this YouTube channel at 9.30am as usual. It will be a more informal service and it will be led for us by the Reverend Andrew Reed. Please do join us if you can. And please do continue to keep an eye on our website our Facebook page and your personal email for further announcements about our services for the remainder of March, Holy Week and Easter. 
Special thanks again to Guy for bringing us our service today. And again, thank you for everyone who's shared in it. Let's pray as Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. Let us pray for one another, that even in these continuing difficult times, we may continue to know the presence of the spirit of peace within us. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up the things that harm us and to seek the fullness of life that we are promised in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So may God, who raised you from the death of sin, to new life in Christ. May he keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.